evening girls yesterday i finished you could be so pretty by holly Bourne, and so today we're going to talk about it to give a quick non-spoiler review because i know people get you know a little bit a little bit prickly about stuff enjoyed this one well enough it's definitely not going to be one of my favorites of hers i don't know whether that's because it's obviously in a high school setting and i'm getting way too old for that kind of thing but obviously i'm always really excited to see what the hell holly is talking about so that's always enough to keep me reading this kind of got advertised to me as like a sci-fi kind of deal and i was expecting it to lean into that and to like the tropes of the genre a bit more and i feel like that's not the direction that holly took with it so if that's something that was putting you off it's really just not as big of a deal as you might think however also on the opposite side of that holly's known for being a really funny writer and i really feel like this book just wasn't on the funnier side of the spectrum for me like and i don't think it was trying to be so that's noteworthy i guess all in all a perfectly fine book if you enjoy holly's other works you're probably gonna enjoy this I, and that's about as much i can say without getting into some spoilery stuff which i will be doing after we talk about the cover i actually think the cover to this is really sick and it's really clever obviously the title you could be so pretty with the lips coming through and then on the inside cover it says you should be so angry which is like the two sides of the coin as far as these two main characters go like this could be something that they would say to each other but it also represents the things that have probably been said to them by their mothers growing up which is a strong theme in the book as well the relationships that they have with their mothers and the way that that has shaped them and their path in the world so let us get into the book proper holly bond sets up this world where feminism has been deemed irrelevant because gender equality has truly been achieved and there is this thing called the Doctrine. This is one of my main gripes with this book, is that we don't really get a lot of insights into what the Doctrine actually says. There's a lot of talk about it and a lot of paraphrasing about it, but I would have liked to have seen at some point during this a, a physical paper copy of the Doctrine so that I could better understand what the hell was going on at some points. The thing at the start of the book that introduces the Doctrine says, The Doctrine states that the bad times are over and true gender equality has been achieved. The Doctrine has issued guidance on how women and girls can best integrate themselves into this new world of empowerment. Of course, the Doctrine is only guidance, it is not law. It is every individual's choice whether they want to embrace it or not. We must celebrate every girl's choice without question. That is what we all fought for. So essentially, she sets up this world where the Doctrine tells a woman how to live, but it's guidance, not law, right? So essentially, women can live however they want. They don't have to follow society's rules. They're just the as a little guideline the main theme of the book is that um in fact oh my god the only thing that i underlined in this entire book is actually really pertinent to the main theme so this is this is Joni, one of the main characters mothers speaking and she says they don't have to make things illegal if society punishes you enough then laws aren't needed and they can continue this delusion of choice so the book explores like how even though something isn't a law or a rule because society frowns upon it so much people feel pressured into doing it and so then of course people don't really have a choice it's just the illusion of choice let's just end the review there i've just cracked it <laughs> so the two main characters are Joni and Belle. Joni has been raised by a mother who is who doesn't follow the doctrine and who is thought of as an invisible somebody who doesn't look the best who doesn't tr do all this uh, people put masks on which is just makeup she doesn't go for plastic surgery to make herself look younger she's just a woman who looks her age essentially and who goes against the doctrine in a lot of ways and so people don't like that and Joni her daughter is kind of followed in her footsteps she's an enlightened teenager who knows that she doesn't have to conform to society's rules in order to get on in life okay and she knows that perhaps these rules aren't the best for women and then on the other hand you've got Belle who's been raised in a household that follows the doctrine to the letter and whose mom is obsessed with masking and her business is all about masking makeup essentially She's like the prettiest, most popular girl in school and she's all set up to be with the hottest guy and basically be the prom queen at this thing called the ceremony. There's a lot of jargon at the start, which is obviously something that you kind of get used to when you're reading sci-fi and it's set in these like dystopian worlds. It felt like a lot for me and I feel like maybe that was a lot of the reason why it took me a while to get into the book. And then I found it a little bit annoying as well because all of the stuff that we'd learned this jargon for it sounded like stuff that we had in real life and I was kind of waiting for the time when it would be explained to us how it was different and how it had advanced maybe from the things that we knew but no it just turned out it was exactly the same as stuff that we knew and that was intentional and I'll go into that maybe at the end no I definitely will go into that at the end I don't know why I said maybe it was slightly annoying that I'd had to like slog through all of this jargon and this weird language that I 
was hoping to get more information on and then basically it could have just said stuff that I was already familiar with but then it wouldn't have had this big impact at the end. So obviously as you can probably tell these girls aren't exactly friendly but there's like an inciting incident that forces them together and they're both also trying to get into the education, basically college, through a scholarship so these incidents kind of force them to get together and Belle starts to see Joni's way of life and it makes her start to question the doctrine and also her entire life so that's fun. Like I said, Belle is set up to be in a relationship with like the most popular hottest guy in school and his name's Damien. Damien's an arsehole basically and he plays smut or essentially porn on the school computers and everybody just kind of laughs at it and it makes Belle feel really uncomfortable but because everybody else finds it funny she feels like she'll be made fun of if she doesn't pretend that she finds it funny as well. Damien makes fun of Belle for not wanting to do stuff with him. She, he calls her blue balls Belle and also the official term for like somebody who hasn't lost their virginity yet is a vanilla. In the context of the book this is just used to explore how girls are kind of pressured into losing their virginity and the narratives that they get fed about what will happen to them once they do that and the conditions under which they will be expected to perform. But the using of that Pretty specifically vanilla got me into this whole mindset where I was like I wanted to get on a soapbox about this for ages so this was just my excuse to be honest. Basically the fact that in modern society vanilla has become this insult okay because this whole BDSM lifestyle has been so like normalized and like kinks are such a massive thing with with the kids <laughs> it's such a stupid thing to say but you know what I mean. I don't like the fact that vanilla has become an insult I don't like the fact that it's become something that you don't want to aspire to be because it just that's the standard thing to be, right? We don't want to pressure people into doing things that they don't want to do. That's not what it's about, bro. And the only reason kinks is such a big deal nowadays is because everybody's afraid of intimacy anyway. Hot fucking take. I said it though. Everybody wants to play a part when we're doing sex things nowadays because it's easier than looking someone in the eye and telling them you love them and missionary. Don't at me. Uh, Belle's mum, like I said, follows the doctrine to a T and she used to be the prettiest girl when she was at school. Her husband Belle's dad obviously prides himself very much on the fact that he's got this gorgeous wife who doesn't need as much work done as the rest of the wives and so as Belle's mum gets older she feels a lot of pressure to still look the same way without admitting that she does work. That in itself is a big commentary but the thing I wanted to focus on is the fact that Belle's mum goes to get some plastic surgery done, I think it's like a facelift or something. And Belle says she's going for this big surgery but everybody's treating it like it's a spa day for the two of them. It's the same in our society, there's this normalisation of plastic surgery and uh, because it's a woman's body and her choice what to do with it we feel like we can't speak to it but there is something to be said of the fact that um, in any other situation where somebody has to go under the knife everybody really worries about them and stuff right but for some reason when they're doing it to improve their appearance it's this big celebrated thing and nobody really really considers the dangers like they're listed out to you on a sheet of paper that you have to sign sure but it's something that societally we sweep under the rug right I thought that was really interesting to explore Okay, are you ready? I'm excited about this next one. So early on in my notes for this book, I wanted to write down that I think it's lesbians. But I always think it's lesbians, okay? I always want it to be lesbians and it always just turns out to be close friends and then I'm disappointed and I have to talk about how I thought it was lesbians on the internet again and everyone's going to think that I fetishise lesbians or something. So I didn't write it down and every time there was like a little smidgen of a hint in the text, I got a little bit more excited but I was like, keep it to yourself, okay? Like maybe this is just an exploration of like budding sexuality and nothing more okay but this time I mean it was really lesbians I don't know like technically if it was technically lesbians but it was it was women loving women for sure and that's something to be proud of from Holly Bourne she finally did lesbians everyone yeah, the two leads have mad sexual chemistry and they share a kiss and uh, even though it doesn't come of anything like a relationship isn't made in the duration of the text it's implied okay and that's cool as shit spoilers have been quite light up until now but i'm going to talk about the ending so this is your last chance to like fuck off if you don't want to know about that so basically at the end of the book the doctrine fully wins like we were focused on two high school girls they were never going to take down the doctrine in the space of this book okay we all knew that from the beginning but the doctrine really wins bro neither of them win the ceremony neither of them get into the education and it's actually because a guy used the doctrine against them like he cried out that it wasn't fair that only girls could get this scholarship and whatnot they are gonna get out of this town where the doctrine has like its hands heavy on it and out into the city where it's not as big of a deal and where people don't follow it as closely and the girls can maybe be themselves in a way that they can't in their hometown Obviously the end message is that it's important that we keep fighting anyway and that we know there are places out in the world where it doesn't matter but 
it's bleak and it's dark and I liked that because it sticks with the sci-fi theme and also when we get further into it and realize that this isn't even sci-fi or dystopia and that's the way that it was intentionally written that's what's happening in today's society we're not overthrowing the doctrine my friends and that is why they could not do it in this book some notes before we get into how it ended Damien the guy who was kind of Belle's boyfriend was meant to be a villain in this and at points he was saying like some really offensive stuff but it was actually unintentionally hilarious Maybe it wasn't unintentional, I don't know, but I just feel like because the rest of the book was like so devoid of like humour, like the main two characters weren't like, it weren't exactly like laugh out loud funny in that way. Like I feel like making your villain the funniest character is a move that maybe you shouldn't make. <laughs> but explicitly said that the reason that Belle has never thought about liking girls before is because that's not in the doctrine and the doctrine explicitly talks about being liked by boys and like desired by men. It's implied obviously just by nature of it being in the text, but. I would have found it interesting to further explore that and I don't know whether the reason that that wasn't explored is because this was aimed towards younger readers maybe but yeah it's just not suitable for younger readers so I do wonder why she didn't lean into it a bit more I would have found that a bit more interesting and plus that's never explicitly stated in the text that that's the reason why she didn't think about it I don't know who this is aimed at to be honest because it is set in high school I'm now confused like I said earlier, it is an intentional non-dystopia, all of the fancy words that Holly Bond uses and stuff are just references to things that we have in real life in order to exemplify the fact that these things that we put up with in everyday life are dystopian and that it's ridiculous to expect a woman to put makeup on every day when, when she's not doing anything and if she doesn't want to, for example because then, because otherwise everybody looks at her and thinks she looks tired and ugly and old, even though she doesn't, she just looks like a person. I understand what she was trying to do. I just really wonder if it was the mic drop that Holly Bond thinks it was, you know, because I feel like the same, she could have explored exactly the same themes and said a lot more in a lot more of a powerful way if she'd leaned into the sci-fi more and uh, over-exaggerated the things a little bit so that it was only a little bit outside of our own world so that it could still say something about it. And you could get at it a little bit stronger because by the time we get to the end when Holly explains to us that this hasn't been a dystopia this whole time the mic has already dropped for all of us and so I feel like it just doesn't have that same impact as if we'd come to the end of a story where everything was a little bit more dystopian and she was like yeah but think about it it's really just not that different from this and then we could be like oh my god holy shit yeah but that's just my opinion okay don't come for me I think my main takeaway from this book is that it's always easier to hate another woman than to hate the systems that are in place that made her that way or to even just question your beliefs in the first place and to consider that there may even be systems that make her that way yeah <laughs> so